Hi there fellow colleagues, my name is Nath Arwa. I am a clinical pharmacist by training and profession and I am the founder of Progressive Pharmacotherapy Consultants. Now, many antimicrobials exhibit incompatibility with standard IV solutions which majorly manifests as precipitation. Now, this precipitation may occlude blood vessels when such IV solutions are infused, compromising clinical treatment outcomes. Now, many leophilized antimicrobials, such as stachoplanin, may form when we shake them vigorously during the dissolution process. Antimicrobial solutions have varying stabilities at room temperature and in the fridge and this may directly impact their efficacy. Administration or infusion rates vary from one antimicrobial to another and not everyone has access to instructions for IV admixture of these antimicrobials. And it's on this background that I've compiled this brief video for you fellow healthcare providers who are directly or indirectly involved in the pharmacotherapy process using IV infusions. Now, this IV admixture instructions in the subsequent slides only apply to adults who have no fluid restrictions. So our first antimicrobial will be a cyclovir. Now for doses up to 350 milligrams, you're supposed to dissolve every 250 milligram vial in 5 ml of water for injection. Now the obtained solution should be further diluted in 50 ml of compatible IV fluids which are normal saline or 5% dextrose. Now the resultant IV solution should then be infused over 60 minutes, one hour. Now this solution is stable at room temperature for 24 hours and should never, never be refrigerated because it tends to crystallize. Now for doses between 351 and 700 milligrams, we should dissolve every 500 milligrams in 10 ml of water for injection. Now, such doses should then be further diluted in 100 ml of normal saline or dextrose 5% in water. They should then be infused over an hour. The stability remains the same. And I would like to underscore the fact that acyclovir should never, never be reconstituted using bacteriostatic water which contains either benzyl alcohol or the parabens because of uh, an interaction that may occur leading to precipitation. Now our next product is amicacin, an aminoglycoside. For doses between 0 and 1 gram, 1000 milligrams, uh, we should dilute the aqueous solution in 100 ml of a compatible IV fluid which is normal saline or 5% dextrose solution in water. Now the resultant infusion solution should then be infused over half to one hour. Now such solutions remain stable for 24 hours at room temperature after dilution. Now the next product I would like to tackle is amoxicillin, IV amoxicillin. Now for doses up to 250 milligrams, we should dissolve, dissolve every 250 milligrams in 5 ml of water for injection prior to dilution in 50 to 100 ml of normal saline. 
we discourage the use of Dexos 5% in this product because of compatibility issues. Now the resultant IV infusion should be infused over half to one hour and such solutions remain stable for 72 hours in the fridge. Now for 500 milligram doses, uh, the 500 milligrams should be dissolved in 10 ml of water for injection before dilution in 50 to 100 ml of normal saline, which is the compatible IV fluid in this case. The resultant IV infusion should be infused over 30 to 60 minutes and the stability remains the same. Now for 1000 milligram doses, we should dissolve the one gram in 20 ml of water for injection prior to dilution in 50 to 100 ml of normal saline before infusing over up to one hour. Stability remains 72 hours in the fridge. Now the next product is a conventional amphotericin B. Now this needs proper planning we should create space in the bag to account for the solvent that we will use during the initial dissolution or emulsifying of the amphotericin. So we should drain a volume of dextrose 5% corresponding to the volume of the amphotericin B solution to be filtered into the bag. Remember the only compatible IV fluid in this case is dextrose 5%. So we should emulsify every 50 milligram vial in 10 ml of water for injection and this emulsion must then be filtered into a bag containing 250 to 500 ml of dextrose 5%. Now, in case you need more than one vial, which is very rare because of the dosage of uh, 0 0.5 to 1 milligram per kilo per dose, then uh, you might need to repeat this dissolution procedure. Now, after filtering the emulsion, we then in massive homogenize by inverting the bag gently up to 10 times. So the amphotericin emulsion spreads evenly in the dextrose 5% solution. Now this solution should then be infused in not less than 120 minutes. Our parenteral admixtures in dextrose 5% are stable and must be protected from light. Now they are stable for 24 hours at room temperature and two days under refrigeration. And I would like to underscore the fact that we should never never use normal saline or any other solutions that contain electrolytes because this leads to precipitation of the amphotericin that would include blood vessels and compromise clinical outcomes. Now for the case of amphotericin B lipid complex, it presents as a suspension or an emulsion. So we should, uh, prior to admixture, shake the vial gently to avoid forming until there is no evidence of any yellow sediment at the bottom of the vial. We should then withdraw the prescribed dose using a syringe and an 18 gauge needle. Now the emulsion should then be filtered into a dextrose 5% IV bag. Now we should uh, use a volume of dextrose 5% solution so that the final dilution or final concentration is 1 milligram per ml of amphotericin B. Now solutions in dextrose 5% for infusion are stable for 48 hours under refrigeration and for an 
for six hours at room temperature for this particular lipid complex. And I would like to underscore the fact that such solutions should never be obtained using normal saline or solutions that contain electrolytes because of lack of compatibility. Precipitation will occur compromising clinical outcomes. Blood occlusion may occur in the blood vessels. Now, uh, I would ne next like to discuss the dissolution process of uh, liposomal amphotericin B. Now, here we dose between 3 to 5 milligrams per kilo per dose per day. So, it needs proper prior planning. Depending on the number of vials that you use, you are advised to withdraw an equivalent amount of the solvent that we use for dissolving the contents of every vial. So, in a nutshell, we should drain a volume of dextrose 5% from the bag corresponding to the total volume of amphotericin B that will be filtered into the bag. Now, the dissolution process is you should uh, emulsify each 50 milligram vial in 12 ml of water for injection. Now that emulsion should then be immediately filtered into the bag containing the dextrose 5% solution. And of course we should repeat this for every vial till we obtain the entire dose prescribed after which the contents of the bag should be homogenized by gently inverting the bag 10 times. Now, this infusion should be done in not less than 120 minutes. Otherwise, an infusion rate reaction would occur. Now, such solutions are stable in the fridge for only 24 hours. And of course, for obvious reasons, we should never dilute um, for liposomal amphotericin B in normal saline, saline containing solutions or any solutions with electrolytes because precipitation would occur, compromising clinical outcomes. Next, I would like to discuss the process behind the reconstitution of ampicillin IV. Now, for doses up to 1 gram, we should dissolve every 500 milligram vial in 1.8 ml of water for injection prior to dilution in 50 ml of the compatible IV fluid, which is normal saline in this case. Now, the obtained IV solution would then, should then be infused over half an hour. Now, such a solution has a stability of 48 hours in the fridge. Now, for doses above 1 gram, we should dissolve every 1 gram vial in 3.5 ml of water for injection, dilute in 50 ml of normal saline before infusing over half an hour, and the stability remains the same. Next, we have ampicillin sulbactam. Now, for doses between 0 and 1.5 grams, we should dissolve every 1.5 gram in 3.2 ml of water for injection, every 3 grams in 6.4 ml of water for injection. Now, the obtained solution should then be further diluted in 50 to 100 ml of normal saline prior to infusion over 30 minutes. Such solutions are stable in the fridge for 72 hours. Next, I would like to discuss how we reconstitute an idulafangin and a kinocandin. Now, for doses of up to 50 milligrams, the 50 milligrams should be dissolved in 15 ml of water for injection prior to dilution in 50 ml of normal saline or dextrose 5% solution which are the two compatible IV fluids before infusing over half an hour. Now such solutions are stable for 72 hours in the fridge or 48 hours at room temperature. 
for 100 mg doses, we should dissolve each 100 mg vial in 30 ml of water for injection prior to dilution in 100 ml of compatible IV fluid, which in this case is normal saline or dexos 5% solution. The resultant IV solution should then be infused over 2 hours precisely. And the stability remains 72 hours at in the fridge or 48 at room temperature. Next, we have azithromycin, a macrolide. Now, for 500 milligram doses, you should dissolve the 500 milligram powder in 4.8 ml of water for injection prior to dilution in either 250 ml of compatible IV fluid, which is normal saline or dexos 5%, and infuse the resultant solution over an hour or we can dilute in a larger volume in 500 ml of the same IV fluids but infuse over a prolonged period of 90 minutes. Such IV solutions are stable for a whole week in the fridge. Now for doses of 1 gram, the 1 gram should be dissolved in a total of 9.6 ml of water for injection prior to dilution in half a liter of compatible IV fluid, either normal saline or dexose 5%. Now, such resultant IV solutions should then be infused slowly over two hours. Now, macrolides, both azithromycin and clarithromycin IV, tend to cause phlebitis. They are very harsh to the veins. They cause a lot of irritation. So the infusion rate must be slow. If you push them by IV bolus, there would be phlebitis and a lot of pain experienced by the patient. So the stability remains a week in the fridge. We have astronum. Now for doses between zero and uh, one gram, the powder, the one gram should be dissolved in three ml of water for injection. Now here we dissolve by shaking vigorously till the entire contents of the vial dissolve. Now the resultant solution should then be diluted in 50 ml of compatible IV fluid, which is normal saline or 5% dextrose prior to infusion over 30 minutes. Now the stability is one week in the fridge or 48 hours at room temperature. For doses of up of over one gram, each one gram vial should be dissolved in three ml of water. Now the prescribed dose should be diluted in a hundred ml of compatible IV fluid prior to infusion of uh, half an hour. And the stability remains seven days in the fridge or 48 hours at room temperature after the final dilution. Next we have caspofungin, also an icanocandin. Now for doses between 35 and 70 milligrams, we dissolve each vial in 10.8 ml of water for injection. Now, we discard vigorous shaking because of the tendency to form. So, mix gently. You can do that by inversion, by swelling, till the powder dissolves to form a clear solution prior to dilution of the final dose in 250 ml of normal saline. Now, the resultant IV solution should then be infused over an hour. Such IV solutions are stable for 48 hours, two days to be precise, in the fridge or for a day at room temperature. Next, we have cefazolin. For doses of up to 1 gram, we should dissolve the 1 gram vial in 2.5 ml water for injection prior to dilution in 50 ml of a compatible IV fluid which should then be infused over half an hour. Now, 
such cefazolin solutions in either normal saline or dextrose 5% solution are stable for 10 days in the fridge or one day at room temperature. Doses above 1 gram uh, should be dissolved in such a manner that every 2 grams are dissolved in 5 ml of water for injection prior to further dilution in 100 ml of the compatible IV fluid. Such doses should then be de infused over half an hour and the stability remains 10 days in the fridge, one day at room temperature. Next we have cefepime. Uh, the dose sh should be dissolved in such a manner that for every 1 gram vial we use 10 ml of water for injection and shake vigorously till the powder dissolves prior to dilution in 50 ml of compatible IV fluid which in this case is normal saline or dextrose 5% solution. Now the resultant IV solution should then be infused over half an hour and the stability of the final solution is one week in the fridge or 24 hours at room temperature. Next, we have cefotaxim. Now, for doses of up to 2 grams, we should dissolve every 1 gram of powder in 10 ml of water for injection and uh, shake vigorously till the powder dissolves prior to dilution of the final dose in a total of 50 ml of compatible IV fluid. Now the resultant IV solution should then be infused over half an hour and this solution remains stable and viable for 5 days in the fridge or 24 hours at room temperature. Next we have ceftarolin, a 5th generation cephalosporin used in the treatment of MRSA. Now, for doses between 200 and 600 milligrams, we should dissolve every vial in 10 ml of water for injection. And uh, in this case, we don't shake vigorously. It should swirl or invert or rotate gently until the powder dissolves to give you a clear solution, which should be further diluted in 250 ml of compatible IV fluid, which is normal saline or dexose 5% solution. The final IV fluid should, solution should then be infused over an hour and it remains stable and viable in the fridge for only 24 hours. Next we have ceftazidim. Now for doses of up to 1 gram, we should dissolve every 500 milligrams in 1.5 ml of water for injection and every 1 gram in 3 ml of water for injection. Now the final dose should then be the diluted in a total of 50 ml normal saline or D5W, which are the compatible IV fluids. Now the final IV solution should then be infused over 30 minutes and it remains stable and viable in the fridge for 72 hours. For doses exceeding a gram, we should dissolve every 500 ml in 1.5 ml of water for injection and every 1 gram in 3 ml of water for injection. The final dose should then be diluted in 50 to 100 ml of compatible IV fluid prior to infusion over half an hour. And the stability remains 72 hours strictly in the fridge. Next, we have ceftazidim avibactam. Now, for doses of up to 2.5 grams, we should dissolve every vial in 10 ml of normal saline or dextrose 5%. Remember, this time we don't use water for injection. Now, the resultant solution should then be further diluted in 50 to 250 ml of compatible IV fluid which should be infused over two hours. Such IV solutions remain viable in the fridge for a day and at room temperature for only 12 hours. Next we have ceftolozen tazobactam. 
Now for doses of up to 1.5 grams, we should dissolve each vial in 10 ml of either water for injection or normal saline. Now, we should avoid shaking vigorously to reduce chances of forming, which would delay the whole admixture process, and part of the form will remain trapped on the sides of the vial, compromising the dose that we are able to withdraw from the vial into the bag. Now, the solution should be further diluted in 100 ml of compatible IV fluid prior to infusion over an hour. Such IV solutions are viable and stable in the fridge for 7 days and at room temperature for 24 hours. Next we have Ceftriaxon or Ceftriaxon, whatever school of thought you may belong to. Now each 250 mg vial should be dissolved in 0.5 ml of water for injection. Each 500 milligram vial should be dissolved in 1.8 milligrams of water for injection. Each 1 gram in 3.6 ml of water for injection. And each 2 grams in 7.2 ml of water for injection. Now the dose should then be further diluted in up to 50 ml for doses of up to 1 gram. Now for the 2 gram dose, we require 100 ml of compatible IV fluid. Now the final IV solution should be infused over half an hour. And uh, Keftriaxone solutions in uh, compatible IV fluids remain stable and viable for 10 days. Now remember, any calcium containing IV solutions like Hartmann's or the Ringer's lactate precipitate ceftriaxone. So you should preferably use only normal saline or dexos 5% during IV admix of ceftriaxone. Next, we have cefiroxine. Now, for doses of up to 750 milligrams, we should dissolve the 750 milligram vial in 3 ml of water for injection prior to dilution in 50 ml of compatible IV fluid which should then be infused over half an hour and uh, such IV solutions remain stable and viable for 7 days in the fridge or 24 hours at room temperature for doses of above 750 milligrams we should dissolve each vial of 750 milligrams in 3 ml of water for injection prior to diluting the final dose in 100 ml of compatible IV fluid which should be infused over an hour and stability remains the same one week in the fridge or one day at room temperature next we have a product that uh, is rarely used in pharmacotherapy but in case you desire to use chloramphenicol each 1 gram vial should be dissolved in 9.2 ml of water for injection prior to dilution in 50 to 100 ml of compatible IV fluid which is normal saline or dexos 5%. Now the final IV solution should then be infused over a maximum of 1 hour. Now such solutions remain stable and viable for only 24 hours in the fridge. Next we have Sidofovia which presents as an aqueous solution that must be diluted. Now the prescribed dose should be diluted in 100 ml of compatible IV fluid, which is in this case only normal saline. The final IV solution should be infused over an hour and such solutions remain stable and viable for one day in the fridge. Next we have another microlite clarithromycin now we should always remember to dissolve the powder in water for injection first if you use normal saline to dissolve the 100 milligrams it would crystallize immediately compromising the whole process so dissolve every 500 milligrams in 10 ml of water for injection prior to dilution in 250 ml of normal saline 
before infusing over one hour. Now such solutions remain viable and stable for two days in the fridge. Next we have clindamycin which presents as an aqueous solution in ampules which must be further diluted in IV solutions. Now for doses between 300 and 600 milligrams, we should dilute the prescribed dose in 50 ml of compatible IV fluid, which is normal saline or 5% dextrose prior to infusion over 10 to 20 minutes. Such solutions remain stable and viable for 32 days in the fridge or 16 days at room temperature. For doses of up to 900 milligrams, we should dilute the aqueous solution in 50 to 100 ml of compatible IV fluid prior to infusion over half an hour. And for doses of up to 120 milligrams, we should dilute the prescribed dose in 100 ml of normal saline prior to infusion over 40 minutes. Now, such IV solutions remain viable and stable for 32 days in the fridge or 16 days at room temperature. Next, we have the famous cholestin. Now, we should dissolve every 150 milligrams of cholestin base in 2 ml of water for injection prior to further dilution of the prescribed dose in 50 to 100 ml of compatible IV fluid which is normal saline or dextrose 5% solution. The final IV solution should then be infused over half an hour and uh, such solutions remain stable and viable in the fridge for a week. Next we have septrin or bactrim or cotrimoxazole solution which also presents in ampules now, for every 5 ml ampule, we should dilute using 125 ml of compatible IV fluid, which is normal saline or dextrose 5%, before infusing over one hour. Now, such solutions remain viable for six hours only at room temperature. And I would like to underscore the fact that they should never be refrigerated to prevent crystallization. Now for doses of up to 2 ampules, which is 10 ml, remember the potency is 480 milligrams of cotrimoxazole per 5 ml, we should dilute using 250 ml of compatible IV fluid and infuse over one and a half hours. Now for doses of up to 3 ampules, we should dilute in half a liter of the compatible IV fluids and infuse over one and a half hours. And please, please remember not to refrigerate to avoid crystallization. And uh, the last bullet just shows us the potency of the IV concentrate, which is 480 milligrams per 5 ml. Next, we have dalbavancin. Now, for doses of up to 500 milligrams, each 500 milligram vial should be dissolved in 25 ml of water for injection. And please, please, please avoid shaking vigorously because it would form. So we can alternate between gentle swelling and inverting the contents of the vial until the powder dissolves completely. Now the resultant solution should then be further diluted in, I would like to underscore, dextrose 5%, 100 ml of dextrose 5% solution. Remember this time we don't use normal saline because of compatibility issues. The final solution should then be infused over half an hour and such solutions remain viable and stable in the fridge for two days now for one gram doses each each 500 mg should be dissolved in 25 ml prior to dilution of the final dose in 250 ml of dextrose five percent solution and the infusion rate remains half an hour the stability remains 
two days in the fridge. Next, we have daptomycin. Now, each vial should be dissolved in 10 ml of normal saline. This time, we don't necessarily have to use water for injection. So, we should add the normal saline to the vial and rotate gently to wet the powder. Allow it to stand for 10 minutes and then swirl gently till we obtain a clear solution. Avoid shaking vigorously or else it will form and delay your admixture process. Now the dose, the prescribed dose should then be further diluted in 50 ml of normal saline. Remember this time we do not use dextrose 5% solution because of compatibility issues. The IV solution should then be infused over half an hour and such solutions remain viable and stable for five days in the fridge. Next we have Doripenem, a Carbapenem. Now each 250 mg dose should be obtained by dissolving the contents of the vial in 10 ml of water for injection or normal saline. Now we do this by shaking gently until it's clear to avoid forming. The prescribed dose should then be further diluted in 50 ml of normal saline or dextrose 5% solution prior to infusing over an hour. Such IV solutions are stable for 72 hours in the fridge. Now for doses of 500 mg, we should dissolve the vial, which is a 500 mg vial in 10 ml of water for injection or normal saline by shaking gently to avoid foaming prior to dilution in 100 ml of compatible IV fluid, which in this case is normal saline or 5% dextrose solution. Now the resultant IV solution should then be infused over an hour and it remains stable and viable for three days in the fridge. Now for a tapenem, which comes in one gram vials, we should dissolve each vial in 10 ml of water for injection prior to diluting the dose in 50 ml of normal saline only. We do not use dextrose 5% because of compatibility issues. And the prescribed dose should then be infused over 30 minutes it remains stable and viable for a day in the fridge. We have flucloxacillin. Now for 250 milligram doses, we should dissolve the 250 milligrams in 5 ml of water for injection and dilute the dose in 100 ml of compatible IV fluid, which is normal saline or dextrose 5, prior to infusion of up to 60 minutes. Now such solutions are stable for a day in the fridge. Now for 5 mg doses, each 500 mg uh, vial should be dissolved in 10 ml of water for injection prior to dilution in 100 ml of compatible IV fluid which should then be infused of over up to 1 hour. For 1 gram doses, we should dissolve the 1 gram in 20 ml of water for injection prior to dilution in 100 ml of uh, compatible IV fluid, which should then be infused over an hour, up to an hour. Stability remains one day in the fridge. Next, we have Foscanet, which comes as a concentrate that must be diluted to a final concentration of 12 milligrams per ml in one of the compatible IV fluids, which is normal saline or dextrose 5% solution. Now the final solution should then be infused over one and a half to two hours. And this solution remains stable and viable in the fridge for a day. Next, we move to Gansiclovia. Uh, for doses of 5 to 6 mg per kilo, we should dissolve the contents of the 500 mg vial in 10 ml of water for injection, then draw the prescribed dose and dilute it further in 100 ml of normal saline or dextrose percent solution. 
the resultant IV solution should then be infused over an hour and it remains stable if uh, the admixer is done in a PVC bag for 14 days in the fridge. Next, we have gentamicin, an amino glycoside. For doses of up to 40 milligrams, we should dilute the aqueous solution in uh, 50 ml of compatible IV fluid, which is dextrose 5% or normal saline, which should then be infused over half an hour and such solutions remain stable and viable in the fridge for 48 hours. Now for doses exceeding 40 milligrams, we should dilute the aqueous solution in 100 ml of compatible IV fluid and infuse over half an hour. Stability remains 48 hours in the fridge or at room temperature. Next, we have imipenem silastity. Now, for doses of up to 500 milligrams, we should dissolve the 500 milligrams in 10 ml of water for injection prior to dilution of the prescribed dose in 100 ml of compatible IV fluid, which in this case is only normal saline. Avoid dextrose 5% in this case. Now the resultant IV solution should then be infused over half an hour and it remains stable and viable in the fridge for a day. Now for doses of up to 1 gram, each 500 mg vial should be dissolved in 10 ml of water for injection. We should then uh, dilute the prescribed dose in a total of 250 ml of compatible IV fluid which is normal saline prior to infusion of an hour. Now, this solution remains stable and viable for a day in the fridge. Next, we have a prodrug of isovuconazole, which is isovuconazonium sulfate. So, 372 milligrams should be dissolved in 5 ml of water for injection. Now, avoid shaking vigorously because it foams. So, shake it, invert, swirl gently till the powder dissolves. Now the prescribed dose should then be further diluted in 250 ml of compatible IV fluid, which in this case is normal saline or dextrose 5% solution. The resultant IV solution should then be infused over an hour and it remains stable and viable for a day in the fridge. Next we have meropenem, a carbapenem. For doses of up to 500 milligrams, we should dissolve a 500 milligram vial in 10 ml of water for injection prior to dilution of the prescribed dose in 50 ml of compatible IV fluid, which in this case is dextrose 5% or normal saline solution. Now, the resultant IV solution can be administered two ways either via intermittent infusion over 30 minutes or via extended infusion over three hours. Now such solutions are stable for up to a day in the fridge or only four hours at room temperature. Now because they are stable for only up to four hours at room temperature, the extended infusion should not exceed three hours to avoid compromising on quality and dosage. Now for doses of up to 1 gram, we should dissolve each gram in 20 ml of water for injection before dilution in 50 ml of a, a, a compatible IV fluid, dextrose 5 or normal saline, prior to infusion of a, either half an hour or 3 hours via extended infusion. Our stability remains the same 24 hours in the fridge or up to four hours at room temperature. Now for two gram doses, each 100 milligrams should be dissolved in 20 ml of water for injection. The prescribed dose should then be diluted in 100 ml of compatible IV fluid prior to infusion of either 30 minutes or three hours. Stability remains 24 hours in the fridge or up to four hours at room temperature. 
Next we have meropenem verbobactam. Now for one gram doses, we dissolve each vial in 20 ml of normal saline. Avoid shaking vigorously to avoid foaming. So you can swirl gently or invert the contents of the vial gently after adding the normal saline till the solution becomes clear. Now the prescribed dose should then be further diluted in 250 ml of compatible IV fluid, which in this case is only normal saline. Now meropenem verbobactam is administered via extended infusions over three hours only. We don't use the intermittent three 30 minute infusions. Now such solutions remain stable and viable for 22 hours in the fridge. For doses of 2 grams, you should dissolve each vial in 20 ml normal saline prior to dilution of the prescribed dose in half a liter of normal saline which is the compatible IV fluid which should then be infused over an hour. And for 4 gram doses, the dissolution is the same. The prescribed dose should be the diluted in a liter of the compatible IV fluid which is normal saline which should then be infused by extended infusion over three hours. Stability remains 22 hours in the fridge. Next we have mycophingin and echinocandin. Now for 50 milligram doses we should dissolve each vial in 5 ml of normal saline to minimize forming of such solutions, you should do so by swelling gently to dissolve, otherwise it would form. Now, the resultant solution should then be further diluted in 100 ml of compatible IV fluid, which is normal saline or dextrose 5% solution prior to infusion of an hour. Now, mycophingin solutions are sensitive to light so remember to protect the contents of the bag from light and the stability is 24 hours at room temperature do not refrigerate now for 100 milligram doses we should dissolve each vial in 5 ml of normal saline avoid shaking to prevent foaming lose the dissolution by swallowing gently the prescribed dose should then be diluted in 100 ml of compatible IV fluid prior to infusion over an hour. Next, we have nafcillin, majorly used in the US for management of MSSA infections. Now, for doses up to 1 gram, we should dissolve every 500 milligrams in 1.8 ml of water for injection. Then the prescribed dose should be diluted in 50 ml of compatible IV fluid, which is dextrose 5 and normal saline. Now the resultant IV solution should then be infused over half an hour and such solutions remain viable and stable in the fridge for one week. Now for doses exceeding a gram, each gram should be dissolved in 3.4 ml of water for injection and uh, 2 grams should be dissolved in 6.6 .6 ml of water for injection. The resultant solutions should then be further diluted in 100 ml of compatible IV fluid prior to infusion over an hour. Stability and viability remains a week in the fridge. Next, we have oritavancin. Now, for doses of 120 milligrams, each 400 milligram vial should be dissolved in 40 ml of water for injection. Now, avoid shaking vigorously, otherwise it will form. So, you do the dissolution by swirling gently. Now, the obtained solution, the prescribed dose, should be further diluted in 880 ml of dextrose 5%. Remember, we don't use normal saline. In this case, because of compatibility issues, the final IV solution should then be infused over three hours to avoid infusion rate related adverse drug reactions, the Redman syndrome. Now, this solution remains stable for only 
half a day in the fridge. So use them freshly prepared to avoid prolonged storage. Next we have the common penicillin G sodium. Uh, each mega unit of 600 milligrams should be dissolved in 2 ml of water. Then the prescribed dose should be further diluted in 50 ml of compatible IV fluid which should be normal saline or 5% dextrose prior to infusion of half an hour. Stability is one week in the fridge. Next we have piperacillin tazobactam. Now for 2.25 milligram, sorry, gram doses, we should dissolve the contents of the vial in 10 ml of water for injection prior to dilution in 50 ml of compatible IV fluid. Now we should then infuse either intermittently over half an hour or via extended infusion for four hours. Such solutions are stable and viable for a week in the fridge. For 3.375 gram doses, we should dissolve in 15 ml of water for injection prior to dilution in 100 ml of compatible IV fluid and infuse over either 30 minutes or 4 hours. And for doses of 4.5 grams, we should dissolve in 20 ml water for injection dilute in 100 ml of compatible IV fluid prior to infusion. Now remember because uh, piperacillin tazobactam solutions are stable for a day at room temperature, we can dissolve the entire dose and uh, dilute it further in a bag of 500 ml compatible IV fluid and infuse continuously over 24 hours to save on nursing time so long as we do not have many other IV solutions to be administered. Next we move to polymyxin B. So 500,000 international units should be dissolved in 2 ml of water for injection prior to dilution of the prescribed dose in 300 to 500 ml of compatible IV fluid, which in this case is normal saline or dexose 5%. Now the final solution should be infused over one to two hours. And such solutions remain stable in the fridge for three days. Next we have rifampicin. Now for doses of 600 mg, we should dissolve each vial in 10 ml of water for injection prior to dilution in half a liter of compatible IV fluid, which in this case is normal saline or D5W. Now the final concentration should not exceed 6 mg per ml, just to avoid phlebitis. Such IV solutions should be infused over three hours and they remain stable and viable for a whole day at room temperature. Now for doses between 300 milligrams and 600 milligrams, you should dissolve each vial in 10 ml of water for injection and further dilute the, the obtained aqueous solution in 100 ml of compatible IV fluid so that the final concentration after dilution does not exceed 6 mg per ml. Such solutions should then be infused over 30 minutes. And the stability remains a day at room. Next we have Tedizolid. Uh, so for 200 mg doses we require 4 ml of water for injection and we should not shake vigorously. Remember to gently swirl the contents of the vial after adding the 4 ml of the water. And you may require to let it stand until the cake has completely dissolved. If necessary, invert gently, but avoid shaking. You can also swirl till the dissolution is complete. After which the obtained solution, the prescribed dose should be further diluted in 
250 ml of the compatible IV fluid, which is only normal saline in this case. The IV solution should then be infused over an hour. It remains stable and viable in the fridge or at room temperature for a day. Next, we have takeoff planning. Now, for doses of 200 milligrams, you should dissolve every 200 milligrams in 3 ml of water for injection. Now, avoid shaking vigorously. Add the water to the contents of the vial and roll it gently between the two palms until it dissolves. This one calls for patience. If you shake it vigorously, it will fall, form and fill the entire vial and it will take you longer to let the foam settle. Now the aqueous solution should then be further diluted in 50 to 100 ml of compatible IV fluid which is dextrose 5 or normal saline. The final IV solution should then be infused over half an hour and it remains stable in the fridge for 24 hours. Now for 400 milligram doses uh, the preparation process is the same but we dilute in 50 to 100 ml of compatible IV fluid infused over the same period of half an hour and stability remains 24 hours in the fridge. Televancin for doses between 150 and 800 milligrams we dissolve each 250 milligram vials in 15 ml of water for injection and we dissolve every 750 in 45 ml of water for injection. Now, please, please do not shake the vial vigorously or else it will form on you. Swirl it gently, invert if need be, or roll it between the palms until all the neophilized powder dissolves. After which, the resultant aqua solution should be diluted in 100 to 250 ml of compatible IV fluid which in this case is dextrose 5 or normal saline. Now the final IV solution should be infused slowly over at least an hour to avoid the Redman syndrome which is an infusion rate related adverse drug reaction. So it would occur if you pushed it too rapidly. Now, such aqueous solutions in IV fluids remain viable and stable in the fridge for a week. Next, we have tigacycline. Now, for 50 mg doses, we dissolve every 50 mg in 5.3 ml of normal saline prior to dilution of the dose in 100 ml of compatible IV fluid which is dextrose 5 or normal saline. Now in this case, we also do not shake during the dissolution process. Otherwise, the powder would form and the infusion is done over up to one hour. Such solutions remain stable and viable for two days in the fridge and one day at room temperature. For 100 milligram doses, each 550 milligram of powder is dissolved in 5.3 ml of normal saline, not water for injection, normal saline. Now the obtained solution should then be further diluted in 100 ml of compatible IV fluid prior to infusion over up to one hour and stability remains 48 hours in the fridge, 24 hours at room temperature. Remember not to shake vigorously to avoid foaming Next, we have tobramycin, which presents as an aqueous solution that must be diluted in a compatible IV fluid. For doses of up to 40 milligrams, we dilute the prescribed dose in 50 ml of normal saline or dextrose 5% prior to infusion of a half an hour. The stability is 96 hours in the fridge or 24 hours at room temperature. Now for any doses exceeding 40 milligrams, we require 100 ml of compatible IV fluid. 
the duration of infusion remains up to one hour the stability remains the same 96 hours in the fridge and 24 hours at room temperature next we have vancomycin now for doses of up to 500 milligrams we require water for injection for dissolution we should measure the volume in such a manner that our final concentration is 50 milligrams per ml now the prescribed dose is further diluted in 100 ml of compatible iv fluid now for doses of up to 500 milligrams you can infuse over half an hour stability remains seven days in the fridge now for any doses between 501 and 250 milligrams we prepare the initial solution so that the final concentration is 50 milligrams per ml prior to dilution in 250 ml of compatible IV fluid. Now such doses should be infused over not less than an hour to prevent the Redman syndrome from occurring. It's an infusion related adverse drug reaction. Such solutions are stable and viable for a week in the free now for doses between 1251 and 1750 milligrams we require to further dilute the aqueous solution in half a liter of compatible IV fluid and the infusion should be done over not less than 90 minutes. Now for any doses between 1751 and 2250 milligrams we dilute in 500 ml of compatible IV fluid and the infusion rate should be 120 minutes or more to avoid Redman syndrome from occurring. Stability remains one week in the fridge. Next we have voriconazole. So the 200 milligrams in a vial should be dissolved in 19 ml of water for injection. And the dose should be further diluted so that the final concentration in the IV bag is between 0 0.5 and 5 milligrams per ml in a compatible IV fluid, which is normal saline or dextrose 5%. Now, this dose should be infused of bet over between one hour and two hours, and such IV solutions remain stable and viable in the fridge for a day. So those are the references I used to compile this short video. The first one was Lexicom. There is information I obtained from uh, leaflets. And I also referred to Global RPH, the clinician's ultimate reference. So I wish you good luck as you compile Institute these antimicrobials in an aseptic manner that our patients may get value for money that we may prevent a bloodstream infections by avoiding contamination of the IV